St Leonard's Church is a living building. It's a building that's been here for almost a thousand years and it's been here to serve the community of Streatham. The building, as you see it now, was reconstructed largely in the 1970s following a fire, although it dates from much earlier than that. One of the things that's really exciting about being part of St Leonard's is to be caught up in this incredible heritage, the history of this building. I'm the 59th rector of Streatham, the second female rector of Streatham, and it's special to feel part of something that has gone back for centuries here, a place to worship God, a place to bring the community of Streatham together. I'm the DAC's inspecting architect in that role. I inspect the building every five years to check that it's all safe and usable. The main part of the building dates from the 1830s. There are parts which are medieval. We know there has been a church on this site for over a thousand years. A small chapel recorded in the Doomsday Book of 1086 would have been about the size of a double garage. Moving forward to the mid 14th century, we know the old Saxon building was demolished and a new church was erected on the site by a chap called Sir John Ward. All that remains of that church today is the tower, over 700 years old, and it's the oldest structure on the London to Brighton Road between Lambeth Palace and Croydon Palace. When the railway came and Streatham started to become suburbanised, the church became too small to accommodate the increasing population. And in 1831, it was decided to knock down the old church and to build a church, the outline of which we see today. In 1831, as a part of that rebuilding, a crypt was created underneath the church, which survives through to the present day. Right, well, here we are, eight foot beneath the ground. Because the new church was going to be so big, it would need massive foundations. And so the suggestion was made, well, why not create a crypt? And then you could sell off spaces to help raise money for the rebuilding of the church. And so that is what they did. And that is why we have a crypt today. That church stood and continued in existence right up to modern times. It was extended, the chancel was added in 1863, but principally the church remained the same size. Sadly, the church that was built in 1831 had a tragedy in 1975 when it was completely destroyed by fire. The whole building was gutted and all that remained was the outer walls and the stone columns that we see in the church today. The roof went, all the monuments that were fixed onto the wall fell down and were smashed. Gone is the darkness of the Victorian church, mainly caused by the dark wooden pews and the heavy stained glass windows into the bright white open space. So it gives you the feeling that you're almost in a cathedral-like church, which is rather unusual for a suburban parish church that you see today. I'm the Archdeacon and I look after around 60 churches in the boroughs of Lambeth and Merton. One of my roles is to look after the fabric of the buildings, to make sure that we care for them and make sure that they're usable for mission today. We carried out the work in the order of urgency, really. The first project was the roofs on the north side. The roof was leaking and stabilising the tower. The tower was in a bad state and there was quite a lot of brickwork repairs done to the buttresses, which were about to fall off. <laughs> but now we've, uh, we've rebuilt them so they're not going to fall off. On a building like this, you actually have to make things. There's nothing that you can order from a catalogue. It's all got to be handmade. The nicest thing, actually, is working with builders who are craftsmen and who take a real pride in what they do. We've stripped the south slope and reslated and insulated. We put in new lead gutters and a new lead flat roof also repaired some stonework, uh, mainly the buttress tables and some Roman render. The second project was the south side, which was leaking very badly, and at the same time as that, improving the kitchen area and creating new toilets and disabled access. Well, we've tried to make the church a little bit more accessible, so we've incorporated a ramp on the left side as you go in, which enables access to the chancel. When I first came to the church, there was one loo and a very tiny kitchen, which was about two metres by two metres, if that. With the funding, we were able to install five toilets and a nice big kitchen, which will make using the church far, far easier and more flexible. 
The third project is repairing the north porch. My first quinquennial inspection noted a crack running along the side, but it wasn't very big. But it grew and grew and grew, and we could visibly see it enlarging. So the structural engineer and I put our heads together to try and work out a way of tying the whole thing together. We've used that to our advantage because we can now create a couple of rooms in that porch, which will be very useful for the church going forward. Buildings have always been places where people come and the life of the community of Streatham has been celebrated in one way or another in this space for a thousand years. We're here to serve the community of Streatham. We're a place of worship on Sundays. We're also a hub for the community during the week, people coming and going. So the redevelopment work has managed to preserve our heritage, which is really important to us, to give us a space that works with the culture of today and our needs of today in the present. But it's also enabled us to hand on with confidence to the next generation, a place that will serve the community of Streatham going forward. It's just lovely to see the building evolve and work with the community using its spaces. This amazing building, like all buildings, lives and breathes. <laughs> It breathes water when you're not expecting it, as, as we found out when we were doing the roofs. You look around and you see the cracks or you see a little bit of discoloration and you look at it and you think, we'll sort you out and we'll fix you. And we do, we get there. Work never finishes. We've got a few other projects lined up. We haven't done the roofs up the east end yet and we've got some access issues to deal with in the upper floor of the gallery. We want to put a lift in and make it more usable. A whole range of people have been involved from some really hard-working volunteers who have filled in the application forms for funding, who have managed the project timeline, who've produced endless spreadsheets and costings. We've got quantity surveyors, we've got architects, archaeologists, and of course, the contractors, the builders, with enormous skill who've come in to do the work. Uh, so yes, a huge team of people, as well as lots and lots of parishioners and local Streatham residents cheering us on, giving money to support the project, and coming in and celebrating with us at each stage of the journey. The nicest thing about working on the church are the people that we've met during our time here. Probably one of the best sites that we've actually worked on and it's really been a pleasure to come to work. I think it's the most amazing, hospitable improvement of the church. There were some real needs crying out and a real sense of vision about using this church for Streatham. And I think looking at it, it's delivering it. People have gone to church here for a thousand years, haven't they? It provides a link with the past and that's what's nice about it. None of this would have been possible without the support of our major funders. The Heritage Lottery Fund is the backbone of our funding stream, but also a number of other bodies came behind us and really helped to enable us to do the work that we've done so far, and we're so grateful to all of them.